have learned um, over the past 12 years running the business. Actually, we were quite excited that there is now a collaborative consumption name for the business because in the past it was just you know sharing a ride and now there's a whole industry uh, growing and arising around uh, you know sharing goods and sharing things. Um, I wanted to talk to you about um, the impact that social media has and um, um, the way we look at it for building up you know a platform that is catering to a very large audience. And uh, when you think about the three core elements that will make uh, a collaborative consumption business successful is first of all you have to have a solution you have to have something that addresses consumer needs uh, the second thing is that you need to provide an environment in which a reputation system can exist and grow otherwise it's not working uh, and the third one is you need to have critical mass for your business you know I think when you think about your business and you think about the things that you want to start and these three uh, key elements are in place. I think you have a very great chance of succeeding in building something that caters to the masses. Now, I wanted to start talking about the fill factor. And you really, when you think about the city like Paris, you know, one thing that you can kiss goodbye is that you will ever have more space. You know, the future will bring that you will have less space in which you need to operate in. And, um, you know, um, the higher the fill rate is and the lower the fill factor, actually, the higher it is, sometimes the better the party. But you will also have, you know, within urban environments, you know, New York, San Francisco, uh, Paris, London, Tokyo, they are attracting, you know, the bright and the best. And we know that at the moment, the biggest migration of mankind is happening, where over five million people each month move from the countryside into cities. And this has never happened before. And today, 50% of the world population lives in city. Uh, soon, in 2050, it's going to be 70%. So. What that does is it creates more density, you know, so the fill factor of cities will go up because they can't expand uh, um, um, in ma most places, they're limited. But it also creates a lot of good. And the good it creates is that a lot of bright minds come together, you know, and they create new concepts, they come up with new innovation, you know, they challenge each other and new concepts arise. But a lot of the collaboration com consumption concepts we're seeing are really, you know, coming from urbanized and they're usually catering to urbanized. And when you want to make something really for a broad audience, you also need to think about people living on the countryside. You know, you need to make sure that the concept can broaden and grow outside of the city because you're only catering to 50% of the world population when you're talking about something for cities. Now, the airline industry and you know, the train industry has gone through a lot of uh, consolidation in the past couple of years. And when you think about your last trip on the plane, you know, it's quite highly likely that the plane was pretty full. You know, so they have really managed to do optimized capacities within trains, within planes. Why? Because they couldn't operate on half empty seats. But the uh, the one vehicle that's actually moving over 80% uh, of our uh, uh, you know humankind is cars. And and cars are you know most of the time it's just one person in the car when it moves. Uh, and, and they has really not yet started to optimize the, the way cars operate because they're privately operated. So 95% of the time, car just sits around and um, when it's been moved, you know, there's just one person in the car. So, you know, an occupancy rate of, you know, less than 3%. So we, one of the biggest challenges that we are trying to address um, is to change that fill factor. Because again, you know, trains and planes move a lot of people but the majority of people are moved within cars and they are not optimized. And this creates a lot of the uh, traffic and the challenges that we see even you know, when, you, when you move around Paris. Now, um, you know, just a number from the US, there's over 500 individual outdoor parking lots in the US. That's 1.7, uh, 1,700 miles, square meter miles of parking lots. It's crazy, you know, it's, it's, it's covering our land and it's, um, it's wasting resources, you know. And of course, you're spending a lot of your time in cars. Over 16 million hours daily are spent in traffic jams. And it's a uh, big economic loss. And you know, uh, me personally, it's driving me crazy. So we need to change that. And our system is fairly simple, our offering is we make seats in those cars bookable, make them accessible. You know, we allow you to book those empty seats when these cars are being moved. Uh, and that's what, that's what carpooling does. And when we started since today, we moved over 40 million people uh, across the platform, a little over a million each month. Uh, and if you go on the platform today, you have 
you can choose from over one million individual trips all across Europe. Um, and um, that's why we built up the largest marketplace for mobility uh, in Europe. But the biggest challenge that we were facing is how do you make people to share the ride? And um, you know, when, you, when you think about your next trip, let's say um, you know, from Paris to Rennes, and you, you, you know, go with your car, and you have three empty seats, you know that, but you still want to know who's going with me, you know, who, who's that person? I think most creative consumption um, businesses need to address um, the trust issue, need to think about the reputation, you need to think about the hurdle you have when you share something. The entire sharing economy you know, is facing that. Now, one uh, thing that could you know, cross your mind as a first thought is, of course, social media is a great place to start. You know? And social media has redefined the word friend. Facebook did that. Right? When Facebook is talking about friends, it's really you know, people you have met, associates, you know, contacts. It's, it's, it's way beyond that. And uh, you know, Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus and you know, all these social networks are a great place to start. But when you, when, you, when you think about the definition of your friends that you would feel comfortable you know, sharing something and getting you know, in a closer relationship, it's actually very mo a limited amount of people. You know? I would probably consider to have 10 good friends. You know? This is my LinkedIn network. Uh, you know, there's a little app on LinkedIn where you can go in and type, uh, you know, your, your on, Google, on LinkedIn Labs and they show you where all your contacts are, you know, across the, the planet. You know, yes, I've met those people and worked with some of them, but they're not my friends. And, um, but even if these would be the people I would do be business with, it would be limiting my platform, the business and the, 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 the service that we would like to provide. So giving you an example, I have 533 friends on Facebook. I know that four of them Today on Paris, I had the chance to meet one of them today. And um, I want to go back to Munich uh, tomorrow night because that's where I'm living and working. And, but I, you know, I know they're not going back to Munich tomorrow at 6 p.m. So if I would base my business model on my Facebook friends, you know, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have a chance to get back to Munich tomorrow. So, so the simple answer is it's a great starting point, but you have to move outside of your friendship zone and um, you know but there's Martha going back to uh, Paris from Paris to Munich tomorrow there's eight rides I've, I've had a look at it you know and I know that Martha has the reputation system that we build up on the side she's been on time you know people have given her good ratings you know she's a frequent traveler I could see you know what people have said about their last travel experience with her so you know I think I would consider going back with Martha tomorrow now you know, we talked about the friend zone, and when you think about the critical mass that you need to really make collaborative consumption work, you know, you know that's the friend zone. These are your Facebook friends, your Google friends, and you know, I think each of us have a couple of those. And then there's the stranger zone. You know, this is where you know SNCF and most classical carriers would operate in. You know, and um, we actually believe you have to make sure that your business caters to the stranger zone. And the stranger zone, you know, a stranger is someone who's not a friend, but he's also not a stranger, you know? And actually, the amount of information you need to give someone to feel comfortable to do a trip from Munich to Paris is not that great. And, you know, platforms like eBay and Amazon sellers and Etsy and so on have really passed the way, you know, to make clever consumption work because you want to connect with your friends. We have Facebook Connect on our side, and that's important. But really, you need to make sure that you take that hurdle and move your audience within the stranger zone. So the stranger zone and the friend zone is where you know, our business is operating in. And um, I'll give you a quick example of how we're doing this. So this is my profile on carpooling.com, and you can see who I am. You know, there's a photo, there's a photo of my car. I have two little girls, so I have a bus, because you know, I have to carry them around, um, who see who I am. But you can also see that I've um, you know, been on time, I've been replying to a request within an hour 49. And of course, very important, you can see what other passenger has said who took the journey with me. Now, if you're planning to go to back to Munich tomorrow, you happen to go there, you know, and you're provided with this kind of information, although you've never met me, we're not friends. We're also not totally strangers, but you have access to that kind of information. And this is the way you build up the business. So social media, Facebook, very important but you have to move other friend zone into the fringe zone 
to really make the business model work. So in strangers we trust. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yeah, we have time left, so is there any questions for, for Marcus? Yes, please. I know the, the website uh, very well. I went many times uh, with Ms. Wagelegen Heisen carefully. Thank you. And um, I don't understand why you, why you start so late, like making an uh, account and uh, making like, um, so that the people could um, put stars and so on. Because earlier the system was like open for everyone and just calling. And uh, sometimes, mi 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 at my point, much more people are like afraid of uh, going there. Okay, well, you know, when we started the platform, we moved a thousand people, you know, from A to B, or 10,000, you know, you know, it, it was okay, people were like kind of scouts, they got on the platform first, you know, they, they just did a simple phone call. When you think about how ride sharing started, it actually started on, you know, offices where you went to 40, 50 years back, and it was just the name and the phone number, and, you know, you pretty much went with a stranger. So the first development was to say, you don't have to go to the office, you can go online, step one, right? Step two was, you now you can talk to them, you know, email, messaging system, phone number. But it's a very clear natural development for us to say, you know, in order to make the, the system available, not only to the young and brave uh, that would go to the platform first, but really to a very broad demographic. You know, we needed to bring in systems for people to have that evaluation system and actually take away the hurdle when it comes to using the system. So when I'm sharing with people what I'm doing in countries where we're not, yet arrived, you know, the first reaction you get is like, oh, you're gonna step into a car with a stranger for six hours, isn't that kind of strange or dangerous, or, you know? These are the first things that come to mind. So when you tell them, you know, actually, you know, you have quite a lot of information before you do the trip. Yes, you can talk to them, that was always the case, but also you can see what other people have said, you can see who that person is, you know, you get, a, you know, a photo, you see which car they people are driving, get some information about their track record, and all of a sudden, you know, this kind of shiver on your back disappears, and not everyone, but the majority of people would say, yeah, sure, you know, I'm willing to do that trip. So it was a very much a natural progression for us to bring them in. Why we haven't that brought that much earlier, that's a very good question, I can't answer that. But we should have. Um. I'm actually more a head shaker than a ride share person. I tried it several times and I felt much less comfortable than when I was head shaking. Um, two out of three times I tried it was actually, it seemed like they were running a business. Uh, like, so they just get a, get a van and fill up the car with, with people. And it's really like, like people in the street, like on their cell phones. And it felt a bit weird. Like, uh, do you have any idea of like, do you like this happening or? Do you like no, I'm not sure which platform you've been using. Um, uh, but it's for Gelegenheit. It's for Gelegenheit. Yeah. Okay, well, we're, um, what we're doing is we have a very large customer care team, and if we see if someone is taking a certain distance just back and forth, you know, we take him out. But also, with the evaluation system, if somebody says, this was clearly a commercial driver, and you don't have one person saying this, two or three people saying that, you know, they're not going to be on but the platform. But it seems that they create new profiles all the time, because, I mean, it, there's no, like, history at all, like yeah. and you just call them, and then you go to some central station somewhere, and that, that's it, like, so, do you have any ideas, like, how are you gonna... Sure, and that again is a very important point with the reputation system. You do have the same thing on eBay. Well, you know, when you are a seller on eBay, and you have no ratings whatsoever, you know, your chances of selling your item are very, very low. And the same applies now to our platform. People have understood that if someone goes in with a zero star rating, you know, either he's brand new to the platform, that could be, you know, or something else has happened with him before, that's why we has erased and started a new platform, a new profile. So your chances of getting and filling your car, you know, are exponentially higher when you have good star ratings and when you have feedback from other people. And that's, this is the way the system has to learn and grow, and that's what reputation systems do and help. Well, the cars were full all the time, so I'm not, I don't know, it's like it's, it still felt like a business, so I don't know. But I guess the same is happening with Airbnb. Uh, people renting apartments just to put them on Airbnb. 
But isn't it normal if you create new platforms that uh, a commercial drive rise out of this and people may take advantage of it or not? But you're still sharing, I mean, you're still taking a car with maybe six other people, but well, it's quite natural for, for people to, I, I'm not saying it should always happen in that way, but I don't see how or why it should be um, pushed out of the system. Would these people be pushed out of the system if they make a commercial? If they if they want to make a commercial drive and they can make extra money out of it and they didn't have any other way before, what is the problem? Is my question. Sure. I think that's a very good point, and the only reason why we take them out sometimes these are, uh, you know, actually drivers who take such good care of their passengers because they want to, you know, have new passengers. The reason why we take them out because they're doing this for commercial reason, so they need a, a you know a, a permit to transport people which they don't have most of the time, so we take them out. But actually, there's a good, there's a good reason. You know, we, we talked to some of the guys very early on, and they actually started now a bus company, uh, one of the, actually the fastest growing bus companies in Germany, and they figured out there's a couple of destinations where the trains can't provide good service, or we don't have enough critical mass, and they jumped in, they built a bus service around it. So new businesses arise with that by just saying, please, you know, don't do it on the platform, but they did it on their own, that works. Yeah. We, we, have the, we have the last question here, we'll need yes, to, to close after that. Isn't that a kind of a, uh, a limitation of the platform if it can't cater for that fluidity between, uh, you know, why do I have to then go to another platform, I have to register on another platform, it's real pain for the user, for me. So it would be really cool if I could just like, you know, go, you know, if, if I want to get, uh, you know, really just this ride is going there anyway or I want to get a taxi or you know essentially that's what you're talking about and, and where's where's what's the difference between these anyway you know what what, what how can you draw a line but what ha what criteria are you using it kind of seems like really fuzzy surely it's just up to me if you're telling me mm. this guy is actually doing this wh why not leave it up to me sure and I think you're making the best point we have actually integrated all the cares on our side so you should come to carpooling and actually check it out. So when you want to go and look for a trip now from A to B, you have side-by-side -side comparison of trains, of buses. We've aggregated all the low-cost carriers to our side now. Because that's exactly what the consumers ask us to do. You know, they said, I don't want to, do not want to go to another side. So we integrated them. Okay. I know we need to close because <laughs> we can continue the discussion after the session. Thank you very much, Marcus. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining.